let's cover the mechanics of solving the Excel worksheet homework assignment. First thing we need to do is select Tools and then Data Analysis. If you don't have Data Analysis, just click Add-ins and select the Analysis Tool Pack. After that installs, you'll need to go back up to Tools and then click Data Analysis. Scroll down a little bit and choose Regression and click OK. So we need to start by selecting the Y range. Click this button, select the Y range and hit Enter. And then we fill in the X range just the same way, selecting all of our X data. And the default is to create a new worksheet. I like to put it in the same worksheet, so I select an output range. And this is just going to be the upper left hand corner of where the new uh, ANOVA table and regression will be printed. So we can select that and then click OK. When we get this regression, let's take these last three and just hit delete. And then take away the rows or the borders around it as well. Now instead of the lower 95%, we'll call this our partial F. And to get that value, let's first delete these. And to get the value, we'll hit Enter. And we'll click our T stat and the shift 6, which is the raised to the power of 2, which will square it. And then we just need to click that and then copy it with Control C and paste with Control V. Now we can rename this X1 and X2. And this is a coefficient and standard error. So now we have the information we need for our y hat value. And the formula for that is b sub 0, which is our intercept, plus, and then all of these pairs of our ANOVA table x1 and then our x1 data. So to fill that in, we'll say equals. We'll start with our b sub 0, plus, open parentheses, and we'll select our ANOVA table x1 times the x1 that's on this row we're filling in the formula for. Close the parentheses, plus, open parentheses, and we'll choose our x2 from the ANOVA table times the x2 from this row that we're creating our formula on. So that's pretty much the y hat formula. And when we paste this down, uh, this b2 and c2 will increase or increment to our next row. But it's also going to do it for these values. To get that to not do that, we need to left click on the B25 and press F4, and that will change it to dollar signs, and we'll do that on 26 and 27 as well. That just tells it to not move those even if we copy and paste this formula. Leave B25, 26, and 27 alone. So then we just need to copy and paste the rest of our Y hat. And let's select all of these and copy and then right click paste special and just paste the values and for the Y we just basically transpose this by copying and pasting our original Y values. To make sure you did your Y hat formula correctly you can uh, focus in on the cell below all of your Y hats and then click the auto sum hit enter and then you can copy and paste this which will sum these other two and they should all be the same. Uh, you're basically your y hat should be equal to the sum of your y's. That lets you know that you did your y hat formula correctly. Now we just need to select uh, our y hat y y hat information and click the chart wizard. Choose the xy scatter diagram. Click next, next, and for the x-axis we'll call it y and for the y-axis we'll call it y hat y. Click next, then finish, and the first thing we need to do is left click on this series and delete it, and then for this y hat y, if you right click on it and select format axis title, click the alignment tab, we need to set this degrees to zero. And then if you click between the y hat and the y, you can just hit enter and escape and move that where you'd like it. Now let's go ahead and uh, expand this 
plot area out to fill up the chart. And you may need to format this a little further, like your starting values in this example might need to be 15 and 15. So to do that we could right click, um, format axis, and then on the scale, instead of 0 we could start at 15 and do the same thing down here. Right click, format axis, scale, and the minimum or the starting value at 15. Makes it a little more relative or focuses it in a little more. Then we need to make sure this is square, or pretty square. And this, the purple dots, we can right click on those and format this data series. For the line, we'll select custom and choose the style, which is this type of line. And for the marker, we'll select none. And that will format that uh, trend line. Now we just need to create our correlation matrix. So let's go back up to tools and well, let's actually click off of our chart and select tools, data analysis, and then go up a little bit to correlation. Click OK. And we need to just set an input range. So if you click here, choose all of your Y and X variables or X data plus the labels up top and then hit enter. Make sure it's grouped by columns, which is, you know, our A, B, and C. And then we're telling it that the labels are in the first row, which is your Y, X1, and X2. Then we just need to set our output range, which is where it's going to print this correlation matrix. So let's have it print right about here. Hit Enter, and then OK. And so we have our partial Fs to determine whether it's predictive or non-predictive. And then we have our simple F from our correlation matrix to further subcategorize those into direct or directly related, synergistic, and multicollinear or unrelated.